One of the things you notice in meditation, as you start looking at your thoughts, looking at your feelings, looking at sensory input, that the solidity of your world starts dissolving away. Both your sense of the world outside and your sense of yourself. And in some cases, just that much feels liberating. Many of the heavy burdens you carry around with you, you begin to see that the heaviness is something that you've invested them in, invested in them yourself. But that's not total liberation. The reason we start letting things seem less solid in this way is so that we can see patterns that we would miss otherwise. Do you notice that when the Buddha summarizes the essence of his awakening, at least the part that's worth teaching, worth passing on, was a principle of causality the connections between things, particularly the connections between what he calls name and form on one hand and consciousness on the other. And starting with this connection, how suffering is built on top of that. And the important elements of name and form our contact and intention. The way you look at the contact, that's another element of name and form. That's called attention. But it's contact not only with the senses, but also between different things going on in the mind. From that kind of contact, you get, you make up your mind. You want to do this, you want to do that. You have an intention that leads to actions. And the Buddha wants you to see this. This is the process of fabrication. This is how we create our worlds, how we create our sense of self. And he wants you to look at it directly as it's happening. And the reason we don't see it is because we divide things up into things that exist, things that don't exist, our self and what lies outside of our self. That first set of questions tends to point our attention away from what we're directly experiencing. The things that we experience, do they really exist? Do they not exist? In other words, is there something lying behind them? Is there nothing lying behind them? And that pulls our attention away from what we're experiencing to what we assume is either out there behind it or not out there behind it. We find ourselves placing our trust in things we don't even see, can't even experience. Same with self and outside of ourselves. Once something is inside of ourselves, we don't observe it very well. We identify with it, and all of a sudden we, it's like putting a foot into a shoe. You're inside it. And your foot starts getting shaped by the shoe. Without you really noticing it. As for things outside yourself, well, you're not really responsible for them. That's the attitude. So both of these ways of looking at things pull your attention away from what the Buddha said is the real issue. It's how your intentions give rise to suffering. How the process of fabrication gives rise to suffering. He wants you to look at these things as a process, so you can understand the patterns. First beginning to see what kinds of fabrication are blatantly unskillful, learning how to drop them. And then as you're 
sensitivity to the idea of what's skillful and what's unskillful gets more and more refined. You find yourself dropping more and more refined things. And you can finally drop the whole process of fabrication. So this is why we start with the breath. What kind of breathing is skillful breathing? What kind of breathing is unskillful breathing? What kind of perceptions are skillful? What kind of perceptions are not skillful? All of these are elements in the process of fabrication. When you're talking to yourself as you meditate, what kind of talking is skillful? What kind of talking is not? The meditation points you right to this level. And asks you to drop your other levels of analyzing, looking at experience. Because looking at the process of fabrication as it's happening is where you're going to see what you really need to see. What's the cause? What's the effect? Which causes are better than other causes? Which effects are better than other effects? This is why the Buddha's most important teachings are the Four Noble Truths, because they point to cause and effect, skillful cause and unskillful cause, desirable effect and undesirable effect, simply in very basic, basic terms, pleasure and pain, ease and stress, happiness and suffering. These are things that we We've known even before we could verbalize anything. So he's trying to pull the mind down to that pre-verbal level as much as you can. And that becomes your basis for looking at things. For mastering the processes of breathing and thinking and perceiving. So you can put them to the ideal purpose, which is to finally go beyond all those processes. So one of the important skills in meditation is learning how to get to this basic level where you're just looking at the building blocks, or the very basic, basic actions which then get constructed into larger and larger patterns. As you're looking at your breath, as you're going out and functioning in the world, when you don't have any other duties, you can simply watch the process of how the eye and forms meet. And then the way you comment on them, the way you direct your eye to look at certain things in certain ways. That's a process, too. And you want to be able to shift in and out of that mode. Because if you look, work in this mode all day long, of course, you won't be able to function at work. You'll be able to get along with people. But if you're good at shifting in and out of those modes, Dealing on the level of people when you need to, dealing on the level simply of the building box blocks when you have the opportunity. You learn a lot of interesting lessons about how the mind works and where the elements that lead to unskillfulness come in. Lack of mindfulness, lack of discernment, lack of concentration. You begin to catch them. It's like learning another language. You don't forget your original language. Just so you learn how to function on another level, in a new context. When people are bilingual or become bilingual, begin to notice how it's almost like they have a separate personality in the other language.
the process of becoming skilled in the other language is a very good lesson in learning how to take things apart, seeing simply processes as they happen. And then you turn around and you have a new perspective on your original language as well. So we're training the mind to be multilingual here. Be able to function in many different contexts. And particularly getting good at this context of simply looking at the processes without worrying about what entities lie behind or don't lie behind it, or which part of the process is you and which part is not. The question here is which activities are skillful and which ones are not skillful. Learn to look at things as activities, as events. And it's not just a game of perception, because it has a really good purpose, release, total freedom. That's what you can gain as you learn to look at things simply in the way of what leads to what. What actions lead to what results? And learn to see things that you never before really thought as, as actions, simply as that, part of a causal chain. It's one of the things the Buddha means by the word emptiness. not loading down this causal chain with your preconceived notions or the constructs you tend to build around it. Learning how to see it simply that, as that, as events. Empty of any other questions that would pull you in other directions. <coughs> 